we have a few minutes to, I guess, chat about um, you know what has quickly become one of the most spoken about and one of the most lauded productions on on Broadway. Well, I'll start by saying congratulations. Most recently uh, nominated for a Grammy as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've 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 now been to Strange Loop four times, Lord have and I, I have, yeah. And it's funny every single time I come, I feel like I'm focusing on something different, I'm learning something different, and there's a different part of the play that that almost gets revealed to me. I, I'd, I'd like to start with that. It is radical, you know. It it, it is it is layered. It is complicated. Did you, did you honestly think people would get it? Yes. No, I'm lying. I mean, well, you know what's funny? Because, like, I, this is actually my first time watching the show in, a, like, a couple of months. And the th one thought that I had a lot of thoughts <laughs> um, while I was watching it, but one of them was just that, like, I realized that the show is what it is and that like that's and that like it's con it's continually ex showing you what it is to itself and to the audience and i found myself sort of moved once again by that that mm -hmm. like it that th this is a piece that um by just being itself i guess is a kind of radical act right um in a strange way and and i i found myself moved to to realize that again but, I, but what I find interesting about it in particular is, you know, the first time you watch the play, for instance, you may think, you know, depending on who you are, you go, oh, this is a play about black and white. You, you, and the second time you watch it, you may go, oh, no, this is a play about religion and, and how it controls people's lives and how it tells us how we should be or shouldn't be. Then it becomes about acceptance. Then it begins, each time it feels like th there's, there's a different layer. And, and really, the more I watch it, I realize it almost feels like a commentary on, you know, all these little prisons, all these structures, all, all these systems. And I guess the, the, the most confining one being our minds. Mm -hmm. And so I'd love to know, when you watch this play, has it, has it freed you a little more? I mean, this is, this is you writing about you. This is you expressing yourself. Obviously, many of us see ourselves right, in it's it. About us, sir. <laughs> <laughs> but it's 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 you it's, in many ways. Yeah, I mean, yes, of course. Um, yeah, like that's the thing about it that's really so interesting is that it's like a jewel that sort of like is constantly turning in the light, and and different facets of it assert itself or revealed each right. time. And and I think that that is part of the power that like that's why you can come back to it many times and see different aspects of mm -hmm. it because it's always there's some different facet. Um, and so does it free me? I guess it 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 feels artistically validating for me because I spent so many years trying to sort of craft this like experience of this person of this essence of this this thought process that was trying to understand itself right. that like to have people come and like be a part of that and for me to be able to come back to it and see that it's still working, that it's still sort of playing itself out, that feels really exciting to me. You know, when it comes to the choreography, Roger, um, it's interesting to watch a production where every move is so intentional in how it shifts your mood, you know, because it's, it's not always happy. It, it, it's not always um, sharp. Uh, sometimes the moves are really... <laughs> are really gradual and flowing and I mean it's everything from you know from the from the, the sparkly gloves when we're going into the one scene to to you know to the mom the, the the choreography and how she she's dancing you know this is your mother and I mean just just all of those moves seem so intentional I'd love to know when you're creating that as a choreographer what are you trying to get us to feel beyond just people are dancing to the music and to the beat I think I'm trying to make you see that they're people. I think something that's most fascinating to me and similar to Michael is that the choreography is built on their behavior. It's not built in a way in which everyone has to do the exact same thing at the same time. Mm -hmm. Everyone mm -hmm. is meant to express themselves in a container and that that has an ability to grow and change and shift like this facet image that Michael gave us. And I think if that's achieved, then 
you all can see yourselves and the different parts of them and the way that they behave. And that behavior is like a volume that gets turned up and then it becomes choreography. Do you have, do you have a favorite number? Is there, like a, is there one part that you watch where you go, that's every single time I see it, that's my favorite move? <laughs> um, oh, yes and no. There's actually, a, like, sometimes you all laugh, and I'm like, you're laughing at choreography, and I don't think that's very common. <laughs> <laughs> there are times where I'm like, I did that. And that's not something you see a lot, where, right. like, the choreography actually, like, moves the story forward. Right. Sometimes it's like, break, now choreography, now back to the story, and so much of the integration of the story is within the way they move and, and push it forward. So there are like a number of places I have to say that I am like. And you should, and you should. And, but also, I'll also say this, I also haven't seen the show in a long time. And like, the ch I just think that if, if, the, if the performers are taking, like if, you, if I have taken care of them, they will take care of the choreography. Mm. And so seeing them like execute it with excitement and not like, uh, six, one. That I, I'm like, oh, they still. It seems like they really enjoy doing that. I think I've done a, a good, a good job. So. I think I think you've done an, an amazing job. And thank you. To, to, you know, to the cast. Congratulations, every single one of you, for executing the job. Um, I, because we, we're going to make the time. I'd love for each of you to introduce yourselves. We know you as all these different characters. We, you know, I've I've been lucky enough to experience you multiple times. And um, I'd, I'd love to ask all of you a, a question if we just, we just go down the line. Um, but uh, yes, please, if we can start introductions all the way, all the way down. Uh, hi. <laughs> I, I am James Jackson Jr. I play Thought 2. Um, or daily self-loathing. Or your daily self-loathing. <laughs> <laughs> I think about you many mornings. Um, I genuinely do. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'll, I'll actually ask, I'll ask one by one, and then we'll, we'll come down. So, James, ask, actually, let's, let, let's start with you. So, Tell I've, me about your morning. I've, I've seen... <laughs> you know, I've, I've seen your, your characters, and I, I, see, I see the way you, you, you play them. You know, whether, you, whether you're playing um, Usher's mom, whether you are playing the, the, the self-loathing, you, you bring to each role a... It's... it's, it's it's extreme, but it also feels like it's, it's real. Do, do, do you get what I'm saying? I, I, don't mm -hmm. know if, I don't know if I'm articulating this correctly, but every single moment and feeling seems very intentional. I think you'd have to just tell the truth as much as possible huh. um, without like, lampooning. I think taking like, this idea of poking fun at someone or right. imitating someone, taking that out just makes you tell the truth. And I think people seem to relate to that. Or people are always surprised that I'm like, I'm not a bitch. Um, <laughs> you, you, you play it very well. Thank we'll you. Say that. <laughs> Thank you. Genuinely. You Thank know? you. And uh, No, no, I, I mean it as, as a character because at some point we hate... It's just what, telling the truth. Yeah, like, but we but hate it's, it's what's happening. Out of love. You know, we hate what's happening to Usher and, and, and we, see you, we see you portray that. What, what do you think it is about Usher's mom in, in the way that you play her that, that, that is so different to the other Usher's mom that we see? Because it feels like a different side of the same human being. I think we all want the best for Usher in our own way, th filtered through whatever. So I have to filter everything through his daily self-loathing. So I filter everything through, you know that's not going to work, right? You know that's really not going to work. There's a whole other way we could do that, and that probably won't work either because it's from you. But <laughs> I just filter everything through that, I think, um, his financial faggotry might filter things mm -hmm. that, um, through a certain lens. Um, I think that's just how we made this work. I think if we're just true to what we're, our initial goal is, but I think we all want to be his number one plan. I love if that. If that makes sense. I love that. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello again. Uh, John Andrew Morrison. I play Thought Four. Thought for, and again, you know, one of my, my favorite moments, and I think one of the audience's favorite moments, is that yearly call. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it is that. It's, it's a moment where we, and, and you know, Michael, you and I have spoken a little bit about this. It is very difficult to tell the story 
of a human being without making it seem like you are for or against that human being in storytelling. And I feel like your portrayal of Usher's mom does that so well, specifically in that piece where we see that she loves him. She absolutely loves him. She loves her son more than anything. Right, and yet she's the source of so much of his pain. She's in her own strange loop. Wow. Um. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But she absolutely, she adores her son more than anything. And, you know, one of the things that I think about a lot is my mom used to say um, <laughs> to me, she would go, if I didn't care about you, I wouldn't fuss on you. Right? Like, my mom, who, if she doesn't like somebody, she doesn't talk to them. Or she lets them do whatever foolishness right. they want to do. Right. But because she cares, she loves him enough to hurt his feelings. And she doesn't necessarily think that that is damaging as much as it is guidance. But it's absolutely love. It's absolutely love. It's the way that she knows how to love. That it, she, she is cycling her own strange loop, the, the thing of religion and all of that. That is how she understands the world. That's the filter that she looks at the world. And there's a way to be and a way not to be. And, um, but does she love that kid? She loves that kid more than anything. Right. Spare, what is it? Spare the, the rod? Spoil the child? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, 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 that's what it feels like. I mean, I, what, what I love about it particularly, you, you want to add to that? I feel like you... Oh, okay, okay, no. <laughs> Again, and, and this maybe ties in, you know, the choreography, the, 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 the you know, the, the writing, um, <laughs> is how you, it feels seamlessly. It feels like you seamlessly bounce between uh, her existing as, as fun and loving and bouncing, you know, and then and going very quickly to this world of damnation and this is the end for you and, you know? Well, I think it's, it's to James's point, and no, one of the things from the very first moment that I, I got this, um, I, I thought it was an extraordinary piece of writing. And the thing that was re clear to me was that she was not a joke. Wow. She might do things that are funny or say things that are silly, but at no point in time is she ever a joke. Her love for her son is as serious as a heart attack. Um, uh, her love of God is as serious as a heart attack. She might say a funny thing or do something that is playful, but she is not a joke. That's what it is. And, um, and so you play the honesty of the thing and you kind of try and drop in. And, you know, I, I honor my mom and a lot of women that I grew up with mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. their gestures and physicality that I, I'm like, that's my Aunt Gloria, that's my mom, this is this, this, like that are all in it, but at no point in time am I lampooning her. It doesn't feel that way. It really doesn't. Congratulations, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hey, Hi. son, it's your dad. <laughs> yes. Yay. 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 In the key. <laughs> um, I'm Jason VC, and I play Thought 5. You do indeed. <laughs> you, you also play um, Usher's father, but yeah. I feel like deeper than that, you play an idea of um, oppression that is contained not just in the gay community, but also in, you know, the male community. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in, in two different scenes, we see that, you know, we see you on the subway and this prison that, that, that Usher has himself in is, I'm, your imagina I'm in your imagination. Yeah. And then again, with, with his dad, which is one of the most painful, um, you know, interactions I think we experience in the play. Talk me through how you are seeing this character, specifically Usher's dad, mm -hmm. who is, he is troubled. He feels like he's the victim. He feels like this is being done to him. He feels like this whole world mm -hmm. is causing him more pain than anybody else. Um, well, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but that does not mean that that's not what you can see. I look at the dad as someone who Here's the thing, unlike the mother, mm -hmm. every time we hear the dad speak, he at the very least is asking his son a question. Damn. 
He is trying to, they're, they're problematic as fuck, those questions. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, but he is trying to figure out who this alien is that happens to be his child. Oof. And then when he, when his child tells him that those questions are harming him, he has no other tools in his box and he's at a loss and that's when he can't handle it anymore. Wow. And he lets that lack of tools lash out to a point where he almost says something or does say something that mm -hmm. he can't handle, mm -hmm. um, and he's got to go. How, how do you how do you think you you factor in, you know, uh, the conversation around not just homosexuality but then blackness and then how it has been layered upon layered upon you you, you get what I'm saying? Where, yeah. Where the conversation now becomes. Is this being black? Is this is this the right way to be black? Is this right. how a black son should be? Right. I mean, that's that's one thing that I've always, in my mind, that I've always thought about the father. Um, even if Usher was straight, he'd still be confused by him. Wow. Because he likes all that white shit. What you mean? Who, who Tory? Tory who? <laughs> you know. Right. Right. You know. It's that thing where it's just like, you know, what, truly, what do you mean complexity? Right. I paid for you to go to motherfucking NYU. I put food on the table. What do you mean complexity? You right. alive. <laughs> I did, I, I got you here, right? right? So complexity, you gonna have to find a boyfriend for that. I like that. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. Wow. <laughs> Hey, I'm John Michael Reese. I am understudy. How many, wait, how many Johns do we have now? Well, how okay. many? I'm There's just John Andrew, John Michael. John Michael. John okay. Michael. Okay. John okay, I'm just making sure that I'm, okay. <laughs> John Michael Reese, um, I understudy four, five, and six, this one, this one, and tonight it was six. Um, <laughs> here we are, hi, hey. Um, so, John, um, it's interesting. So I've seen it three times. This is the fourth time I've been here. First time with you. And what I loved was watching your interpretation of the character. Your, because, you know, sometimes if you, if you watch, if you come to Strange Loop once, you, you, you can think that these are the people. I, for myself personally, have come to feel like they're ideas. You know, I was, I was interested to see how you interpreted the idea of the character, you know, of, of this man who is, you know, moonlighting and, and is living in this world where he feels like he's doing someone a favor and he's also, he, he himself, funny enough, seems like he is not completely free in his world. Talk me through a little bit of how you process this character where, on the surface, we don't like him immediately. Sure. And yet, Maybe ever. the way you were playing the character, I was going, huh, it doesn't seem like he's having a good time in his own world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I... Really, I mean, this is, it's a crazy, <laughs> it's a crazy, crazy uh, role to do. It's a lot of, like, crazy action. So I really think about this in terms of uh, chaotic chaos. Like, he's chaos, he's toxic masculinity, mm -hmm. patriarchy, and I think he, he's a violent code switcher, like, masculine, feminine, he can do this, this, and this, and he has, doesn't really have a core. And I think that, like, I, you know, I definitely don't <laughs> approach <laughs> Uh, mom and dad the same way that I approach <laughs> right, sex, right? right? So like, right. I, there is a lot, it is a lot for me uh, just going like, he's here, now he's here, now he's here, now he's here, now he's here, he's here, he's just all over the place. In service of, I mean, I don't know if he's like, I'm gonna help, I'm, my goal is to really help Usher, you know? I don't think that's like, that's what he's like set out to do. Right. But I think in the end, it's like, there are these, there are these thoughts that we have. I know that I have negative thoughts, I have people in the mirror who are um, saying crazy shit to me. Um, um, I think he represents like sort of forbidden desires. Right. Um, and I think that he does ultimately push Usher to change. Like um, after In With Daddy, boundaries I think is a, is a breaking point. And I don't mm. think I could, I don't think I could, um, I don't say go as hard or you know, that scene is really, it's a really intense scene. Right. Um, and I don't think it's for not, I don't think it's just, to be shocking, I think it is really to like get Usher to the next point so that he can um, confront himself. Um, so it is, it's a weird character in that it's not like, here I, I'm thought six, here I am, this is John Michael, this is, <laughs> this is me, <laughs> right, showing all this to you. So it's, um, it is 
Um, it's also been a journey, because I also didn't have a rehearsal process, right? I was like, I'm an understudy. Um, so my rehearsal process has been um, <laughs> on stage. Like, it has been the se six, seven months we've been doing it. I have been learning um, about the show, about myself, about how I, how I perform in my relationship to my blackness and masculinity. It is, I mean, it's like, it is a feast. Um, it is toxic. It's wild. Um, but ultimately, I try to go and have fun, if that sounds, <laughs> if that, if that sounds crazy, but like, uh, I just try to like, do the scenes that are in front of me. Oh, congratulations. Yep. You do that. Thank you. I know we're getting the wrap up, but we're gonna make sure we get, we get to everyone, so please. Hi, Hi I'm also John Michael Lyles, and I play Thought 3. Thought 3, the agent, I mean, Chad, um, do, do you have a favorite? A favorite, like, role that yeah. I play? You play um, them all so well. Thank and I feel like you. you enjoy them all for very different reasons. I mean... Like, I wish you were my agent. I Do you know could what I mean? be. With the fan and the call, and the, you know what I mean? You just need a fan I clap. don't eat Doritos and not think of you. Every single time oh I eat God. Doritos now, I think of that scene. You can have all the Doritos. <laughs> I you, never want to eat Doritos, Doritos have you ever eaten again. Now? I mean, I go through a bag a week. <laughs> but thankfully, on Tuesdays, the bags are fresh. So it's a bit easier to eat them. <laughs> On Sundays, they're very stale. <laughs> I, you, know, you know what I love about watching you on stage is every single character and every single person seems to be fulfilling a specific role. Yours seems to be, in many ways, um, a levity in moments where we may not feel that it, that it fits, a levity in moments where we feel like it won't even work. And, and I feel like with every character you're coming, there's a, there's a certain, maybe it's an ambivalence, or maybe it's a, just, just a, like a, you know, a feeling of, uh, I, don't, I don't even care about what's happening. It is intentional, though, and I'd, I'd love to know what your process is for thinking about why each of these characters can be funny and yet so real at the same time. Um, I mean, in my mind, I never got too heady about, like, representing the character in its like truth truth yeah because i don't feel like i'm playing agent fairweather as he truly is right it's how usher sees him as a villain in his brain i love that so i feel like this sense of permission to be like antagonizing in a way <laughs> like maybe i'm truly him or like i'm this exaggerated version of your mom in this scene or like your agent or your cousin nala or your niece um so i don't know i feel like this sense of um I feel like I said it in an Instagram post, like sour candy. Like, you know those commercials where the like, little candy monster would like cut your hair off, but then be like, oh, I love you. <laughs> you know, like, I feel like that. It's like, you can't get rid of me. I'm in your brain, you know? <laughs> I'll, never, I'll never lose that. Thank you very much yeah. for that. Congratulations, yeah. John Michael. Thank you so much. We've got two more. Um, oh, sorry. You're probably like, who are you no, and why yes. are you here? <laughs> I feel like I've seen you on the screen. Yes, I'm the yes. music director. I'm I Rona see you when Siddiqui, I look on the, the music screen. Director. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Y your name, please. Rona Siddiqui. Yes, Rona. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. con thank you so much. It's funny because I, I remember the first time I looked up and I was like, are they watching something? Um, <laughs> yes. You know, um, let's Sometimes talk about that. Watching. So, yeah. first things first, congratulations <laughs> because, again, Grammy nominated for Best Musical Theatre Album. And anyone can see why. It, it, it's, it's not just about the music, but it's how you have to transition the music from one tempo to the next, from one feeling to the next, from one moment, and it's all happening so quickly, and you, you're moving through it. What do you think your, your role is beyond just moving the music along? What are you trying to do in, in, in tandem with the performers? I mean, it's, it's the constant quest for telling this story as honestly as we possibly can. And it's like, why is it even a musical to begin with, right? Music is, it's to heighten everything. It's like, when you can't just talk anymore, that's when you have to start to sing. And so then, what does every single note and phrase represent? And then how do we amplify that to get it to be the exact comedic moment or mm -hmm, touching moment mm -hmm. or whatever. How do, we, how do we crescendo this? How do we speak this word? You know, it's just all of that stuff. It's uh, the details. It's all in the details. I think you executed amazingly. I hope you win uh, the Grammy, genuinely. I think, I think you all deserve it. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll get this mic and we'll, we'll, we'll bring it all, all the way down. The last two who we haven't spoken to. Hello. Um, I'm El Morgan Lee. I play Thought One. 
thought one and uh, arguably the most positive part of the play. I feel like you keep us as an audience hopeful the entire time. You know, there are many moments where it feels like it's, it's constant despair. It feels like it's, it's not gonna go away. It just feels like that. And there are, all, there, there are these seminal moments in the play where it feels like you're constantly tethering us mm. to the little hope that, that Usher has. Talk me through um, the hows, the whys, and, and again, what you're trying to do with each of these characters that you're playing, who in their all, all in very different ways, yeah. you know, just somehow tether us to hope. Yeah, I think that thought one, number one, being the only woman in this story, sort of has a lot on her shoulders, as black women do. Um, and I, thank black yes, women. thank black women. Thank um, I think that, like, it's interesting because hope is never a word that I would have used. I, it's, I think that she is always trying to get Usher to think outside of the box that Usher has sort of been put himself into. She, she wants Usher to live. She wants Usher to feel free. Um, and in those ways, that's certainly an L. Morgan element to her. Um, but yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. Is even, even in sort of crazy pants, uh, you know, Rafiki, who comes out screaming and yelling, right, right. there's still this element of like, come on, like, you know, live your life. Um, and even as the supervisor of sexual ambivalence, it's, I want you to get laid. I want you to, to live your life, but I also want you to know why you're doing it. I don't want you to do it in just for nothing. Like, know why you're using this thing. Know why, you're, why you are taking the steps that you're taking and don't be afraid to challenge yourself because that's important and that's how you actually find the next step. Um, yeah, so she likes for Usher to take a leap. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You, 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 I mean, every single time I've seen it, you know, when, when you finish performing this, first of all, the first laugh I'm always waiting for, I like this and I like Wicked. <laughs> I mean, it's just every single time it brings so much joy. But the way it ends, you can feel the goosebumps. You know, you can, you can, you can feel, your voice is phenomenal. Can I just say, like, the notes that you hit the... Um, it's it's not even a it's it's not even a why question. It's it's maybe it's more of like a how or maybe it's maybe it's personalizing it. You know, for you in those moments using your voice. What do you what do you think the symbolism is for the way that you sing what you sing? Because you could sing it any way. You know you, you know what I mean. I know it's written, but there are so many ways you could perform it. There are so many ways you could use that voice, and and it seems so. Forgive the pun, but pitch perfect in what you're trying to achieve. Oh, thank you. Um, I think Michael did a good job of sort of shaping the sounds that happen in Thought One um, with us along the way um, in ways that I also want to kill you sometimes because, <laughs> because, because a lot of my moments are very out in like they're very like exposed. Yes. So like they don't really get to sort of sit back in the cut and kind of ride the groove with the backgrounds. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, here she is. And if it comes out, it comes out. If it doesn't, well, we're all in this together. Um, <laughs> and so, which happened today. Um, so, but but there are, there are, it's, it's a show that has sort of allowed me in so many ways to uh, remind myself that I'm able to sing through certain things. Like this wow. show is the first show that, um, it's the first, oh, we have to get into this conversation. But it's the first show that, you know, I've, I've been a part of that was at this sort of level um, post transition. And right. so, like, knowing that I'm able to sing through this score in the ways that I have been able to is also like such a beautiful sort of reminder to self that, like, oh, no, no, girl, you can do this, like, you're good. Like, you know, do what you need to do, and you've been singing for forever. This is an opportunity to use the voice. I love it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Also, you are really watching this show, Trevor. Like, you're, like, you're, like, taking some things from it that are, like, really <laughs> insightful, so it's lovely to hear. Hi, Trevor. Hi. Hi. Hey, y'all. I'm Jacqueline Spivey, I play Usher. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it feels like an understatement to say you play Usher. You, you are Usher. 
You know, you know, you you are this this human being who we meet, who has every dream, every hope, every aspiration. You you are this character who we travel with through every disappointment, through every single hurt, and and also through every little every little moment of mischief and 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 joy as well. And and, and maybe 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 let's start with that. You you're playing a character that is, I mean, you know, you you are. The, the, the linchpin. Everything goes through you. You 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 define this. When you think of Asha, who do you think of? What like what do you see? What do you hope we get from Asha that maybe we don't necessarily just from watching the play once or twice? Um, I, I hope you see a, a human being. I hope you see a person. Um, I feel like all the Broadway shows love to say, you know, we're telling real stories about real people. But it's like, real people don't just break out in song about some happy shit and then go back to life. Like, I feel like we're telling a real story about somebody who exists that you probably don't care about, but they have worth. And you should think that they have worth. Uh, but since you don't, we're gonna show you why he does. Mm -hmm. And um, we're also gonna show you why he doesn't think he does. And it's because of you. Um, so it's like, you know, it's no shade to the audience, you know? But it's like, I remember, I remember my first performance in DC and um, I went out, you know, to the lobby because that was our stage door. Mm -hmm. And it was just a group of people. And they were just like, I am sorry for everything <laughs> I did. And it's like, don't apologize, do better. Don't apologize to me. I didn't, <laughs> that ain't me, you know, I'm playing it. But it's also like, we're, we're, we're people, we're trying our best. We're all asking questions about like, mm. what is life for us? Like what is, where is my journey gonna take me, mm -hmm. you know? And we shouldn't beat ourselves up for those questions. So like, that's what I think of when I think of Usher. Right. Like I just think of somebody trying to figure his shit out. Yeah. I think we're trying to figure, we're trying to figure out our shit with you while you're trying to figure that out. Because, because on the journey you ask so many questions of every single person in the audience. You know, every, every character is asking questions constantly of ourselves, our relationships with our parents. You know, the, the way we see ourselves, uh, you know, the way we interact with others, uh, the permission they give us to exist or not. And, and, and maybe in that, I, I would love to know from you, as, as you've performed Usher, as you've gone through this journey, you know, that, that, that is now coming to a close, I would love to know what you've learned about Usher that you didn't know from the very first time you played Usher. Damn. Okay, Trevor. Um, I think what I've learned is that his imperfections are what make him gorgeous to me. Mm. Um, I feel like in the beginning, it was... <laughs> no, and I, and I say that, I say that because it's like, for me, with how I play Usher, I want the audience, like, at the end of the show to wonder what happens next. I don't want you to think he's made up his mind. Because there is a lot of shit in his life that it's like, okay, Usher, we can do better. It's a little problematic. Yeah. But it's like, does he do better? Does he strive for better? Like, he never makes up in his mind what he's going to do. It's like, to me, you're watching him just, like, discover the hope within himself. Mm -hmm and trying to figure out, like, what am I capable of and what can I do? And in the beginning, I thought Usher made up his mind. Like, he's gonna write a show, and it's gonna be good, he's gonna win a Pulitzer. <laughs> and um, I honestly had to take Michael out of the equation Thank and think, God. what? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> After a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but like, what, but what happens if he doesn't win a Pulitzer? Hmm. What happens if he's not nominated for a Grammy? He's still worthy. What happens if people don't like his show? He still has worth, you know? Some people don't like his show. You, you achieved that. Um, honest, it's been an absolute pleasure seeing you time and time again. Every single one of you, thank you so much. Um, I think I speak for many people, if not everyone in the audience, when I say it's, it's, a, it's, it's a ride, and it's what I feel like every show should be. It's not predictable. It's not easy. You know, it's, it's, it, it asks you questions, it leaves you thinking, it, it makes you laugh. There's many parts where you, you, you want to cry or you do cry, but every single one of you, I hope you know like what an amazing job you've done here. I hope you know um, how each person gets touched in a different way. And uh, the, the final question I have is just for you, uh, Michael, which is, um, has Tyler Perry seen the play? <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> Tyler Perry has not seen a strange loop. Okay. Okay. However, 
he and I had spoken numerous times. We have a cute little relationship over the phone. And I told him, if it's going to stress you out, don't come. <laughs> and so for me, that's enough. You know, if I, if I was him, I wouldn't come either. <laughs> well, actually, I would because I'm, I mean, I'm that person. But, <laughs> but I respect him. Like, he gave me some good advice recently that I won't right. share. And so it's all, you know, it's all gravy. It is great. I, I, I hope he comes. If I speak to him again, I'll tell him he should come. Because I, again, I Listen, can I... he, people have been trying to get this man to come to this show. <laughs> And other people have been saying, do not come to this show. <laughs> so you need to, like, tell those people to shut the fuck up <laughs> if that's what you really want. We'll definitely do that. Um, congratulations again, Michael. Congratulations to every single person on the stage. Thank you for coming, Thank everybody. You. Thank you for joining us tonight. Have a great night. And congratulations, Strange Loop.